Have you heard that your child needs to detox from vaccines or detox from heavy metals in general? I'm Dr. Mona Amin, a board certified pediatrician and mom, and today we're discussing detoxes, their risks, and when detoxes are actually needed. Let's get to it. So what exactly is a detox? The idea behind detoxing is to cleanse the body of toxins, which some claim are in processed foods, mm, vaccines, no, environmental pollutants, we'll get to that. You'll see detox diets, drinks, and supplements promising to flush these toxins out. But here's the thing, our bodies already have built-in detox systems. The liver, kidneys, and skin are incredible natural filters, working hard to remove waste every single day. No detox product needed. I get it though, there's so much hype around detox products, but think of it this way, our liver, kidneys, and skin are like your body's personal cleaning crew, working 24 seven without the need of any fancy juice cleanse or supplement or special spray. It's like having a built-in detox machine that we don't need to upgrade. Trust me, your body's got this. And besides the point, the general population does not need heavy metal detoxes, including from things like vaccines, because they're not living with toxins in their body. Lately, we've seen detox products marketed towards kids, from smoothies to supplements and detox baths and herbs. It's all being pitched as a way to cleanse your child's system. Unfortunately, none of these have studies to show efficacy or medical need or safety. For the mass majority of children, detoxes are not needed. Children's bodies are incredibly resilient. Their organs, like the liver and kidney, do an amazing job of filtering out waste and toxins that we may encounter in micro amounts. No special detoxes required. In fact, most so-called toxins are things our bodies already know how to handle, like food byproducts or environmental exposures. Even for kids, their bodies are great at getting rid of things through normal processes like sweating, urination, and bowel movements. So why are people online recommending detoxes if they're not actually needed? First, misinformation or disinformation is a big part of it. Misinformation is the unintentional spread of false or misleading information, like a parent unknowingly sharing that detox supplements are necessary for children's health based on incorrect beliefs. Disinformation, on the other hand, is the deliberate spread of false information to deceive, such as a company intentionally advertising detox supplements for kids with false claims, like FDA approved or clinically proven, or someone fear-mongering to sell a product for financial gain. Both can be harmful, but the key difference is intent. Misinformation is accidental, while disinformation is intentional. Another factor is a misunderstanding of human physiology, food science, and vaccines. Our bodies are already designed to detox naturally, like I mentioned, we have organs that do this, so you don't need special products. But when people don't fully understand how the body works, it can be easy to believe that we need extra help to cleanse toxins. This also comes to people not understanding how food science and vaccines work, and how the doses of products, including any metal that may be in there, is present in small amounts and not harmful to the human body. Then there's the influence of alternative health trends. Detoxes often come from wellness movements that promote natural or holistic health solutions. While there can be value in many aspects of alternative health, not everything you see is backed by science, and detoxes are a perfect example of this. I, for one, really enjoy Ayurvedic medicine, acupuncture, chiropractic care, and more. But we have to understand the benefits and risks of all of these and not fall prey to fear-based marketing. Next, financial gain also plays a big role. The wellness industry and detox products are a multi-billion dollar industry and marketing is often profit driven. Companies make big promises claiming their detox will boost energy, clear up skin, or even prevent disease. As of recent estimates, the global detox market, including supplements, teas, and detox programs is valued at over $50 billion and is projected to continue growing at a significant rate. So when people say to watch out for big pharma or big food harming you with food and vaccines and swaying you to purchase supplements or detoxes, remember, the financial vested interest exists there. Lastly, there's confusion between real heavy food metal poisoning and low level toxin exposure. Heavy metal poisoning, which is very serious, requires medical treatment, but this is rare, and we will discuss this later in the video. What many people experience is low level exposure to environmental toxins, which your body can handle naturally. Detox products prey on this fear, suggesting that you need their help, but in reality, your body's already doing the work. Parents often turn to heavy metal detoxes for their children due to concerns about exposure to toxic metals like lead, mercury, aluminum, or arsenic. These worries may stem from environmental factors such as polluted air or water, or fears of contamination in food or vaccines. Parents may also be concerned about products like toys, baby food, or cookware containing harmful metals. 
Additionally, some parents of children with autism or developmental diagnoses may seek detoxes based on the belief, though unsupported by scientific evidence, that heavy metals contribute to these conditions, often citing concerns about vaccines containing thiomersol, a mercury-based preservative, which is no longer used in most vaccines. But let's take food and vaccines and why detoxes are not needed. While concerns about heavy metals in food and water are spreading, these are usually tied to misunderstanding of food science and processing of foods. It's important to know these metals are usually present in trace amounts due to natural environmental factors. Foods can absorb small amounts from the soil, and water quality is regulated to keep contaminants low. This applies to baby foods, processed foods, and fresh foods. Regulatory agencies like the FDA and EPA monitor and control heavy metal levels to ensure safety. I personally believe regulations and monitoring should always be happening and always be improving. But as it stands, when we focus on a balanced diet of prioritizing fresh foods over processed foods, we have no harm. Even the occasional processed food favorite is not in need of a detox. Even organic or non-processed foods can contain trace metals, but the risk is minimal with a balanced diet. The best approach is a variety of whole foods and staying informed about local water quality. Consulting with your local pediatrician can help as they would be seeing trends of harm that would sound the alarm before anybody else. Going back to what happened in Flint, Michigan, when a local pediatrician realized that there may be increased lead exposure in the water supply, causing harm to her patients. Pediatricians are always monitoring for the safety of our children, and we will do anything in our power to make sure that they stay healthy. And if we see a trend of concern for a child's development, we would sound the alarm before anybody else. Watch my video here on heavy metals in baby foods and best practices that apply even after the infancy stage. My belief is that regulatory practices should always aim to have the least metals in our food and products as possible, while also understanding processing and the need for maintaining shelf life. Okay, let's clear up a couple of myths about vaccines and detoxing. First off, after you get a vaccine, you do not need to sit in a fancy detox bath like you're a stressed out superhero trying to fight off evil toxins. Vaccines don't load your body up with anything that requires a deep cleanse. What they actually do is provide you immunity towards illnesses that can cause hospitalizations, complications, or death. There's a myth that vaccines contain dangerous heavy metals like mercury and aluminum in amounts that could harm children. This myth is misleading and not supported by any science. While some vaccines once used a preservative called thiomersol, which contains a form of mercury, this was removed from almost all childhood vaccines in the early 2000s as a precaution, even though research consistently showed it was safe. Today, the only vaccines that may contain thiomersol are certain multi-dose flu vaccines, and thiomersol-free options are available. As for aluminum, it's used in tiny, carefully regulated amounts in some vaccines as an adjuvant to boost immune response. Aluminum as a metal is the third most abundant element and is found in plants, soil, water, and air. As I mentioned, aluminum is used in vaccines as an adjuvant, which is a vaccine component that boosts the immune response in the vaccine. The amount of aluminum in vaccines is far less than what we encounter in our daily environment, including in foods and drinking water. Vaccines contain aluminum, but the amount is very small and similar to what babies get from their diet. In the first six months, infants receive about 4.4 milligrams of aluminum from vaccines, while they consume more through their food and diet. Breastfed babies get about 7 milligrams. So the aluminum in vaccines is much less than what babies naturally get from their environment and from their nutrition, and it's safe in the amounts that are being used. Extensive research has shown that these trace amounts are safe for children and help make vaccines more effective at preventing serious diseases, which is the entire point. Vaccines are tested for safety and the benefits far outweigh the risks, helping protect children from potentially life-threatening illnesses. So, no need for detox baths, no need to go down the rabbit hole of reading about heavy metals. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep your little one healthy and trust the science behind vaccines. Detox products for kids can be harmful due to improper dosing, lack of regulation, and potential side effects. These products are less regulated than vaccines or food. We don't know if they actually do anything or if they're safe for various age groups and weights. Detoxes can also cause dehydration, digestive issues, and interfere with natural detox processes. Children's bodies already detox through organs like the liver and kidneys, so these products are unnecessary. Doing a detox is at your own discretion, but remember they're not needed and understand the benefit and risk of doing so. When it comes to heavy metals, the one we are concerned about is too much lead exposure. Kids may be exposed to it through old lead-based paints in homes built before the 1970s. 
Lead can also be present in contaminated water due to old plumbing pipes, talking about Flint, Michigan, which is a huge public health crisis. If a child is at higher risk, like living in an older home, their pediatrician may recommend lead testing or lead screening. Some states even require screening tests at specific ages, usually 12 months and 18 months or two years for extra safety. As a pediatrician, I have seen many cases of elevated lead, and this was usually in lower socioeconomic families that were living in older homes and there was peeling paint. Lead is especially risky for children because their brains and bodies are still developing. Exposure can lead to developmental delays, learning difficulties, and other health issues that can last for a long time. In cases of confirmed lead poisoning, Medical detox is sometimes necessary. The main treatment is called chelation therapy. This is a carefully controlled medical procedure where a special medication binds to the heavy metals in the bloodstream, allowing the body to safely eliminate them. Chelation therapy should always be done under medical supervision because it's only necessary and safe in cases of serious poisoning. And I have seen this occur in hospitals, in my residency training for those with high lead exposure. As it stands, there is no ideal test for checking for other heavy metals. And if you are seeing a functional medicine doctor who's testing hair samples, urine samples, or blood tests, please know that there is not a threshold of normal. And many of the results can be misinterpreted and cause more harm than good with therapies that may not be needed. Now, instead of worrying about detoxing, let's talk about something far more effective, which is prevention. The truth is preventing toxins from entering your child's body in the first place is much more powerful than any detox product or fad diet. Although our bodies are designed to handle everyday toxins, we can help our kids by focusing on healthy habits that minimize exposure in the first place. Here's how. Offer a balanced diet. Ensure your child gets a variety of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains and whole foods. These provide essential nutrients that support the liver, kidneys, and digestive system. Balance processed and fresh foods, leaning in on fresh foods as much as possible with your finances and time. Hydration. Water is nature's detox drink. Keep your kids well hydrated to help flush out waste. And no, do not panic about fluoride and water. That's for another video. Regular physical activity. Encourage them to stay active as exercise helps with circulation and overall detoxification. Good sleep. Sleep allows the body to repair itself, including managing toxin removal, and is great for stress reduction. Keep their environment as clean as possible by reducing exposure to pollutants and secondhand smoke. This can include considering an air filter if your child is prone to airway irritation, asthma, or allergies, and keeping vents clean. When we focus on prevention, we help protect our kids from harmful substances in a way that lasts long term. And the best part? There's no need for any costly or unnecessary detox products. Now that you know the facts, please share this video. We need more than ever to spread facts. My job as a pediatrician and a health content creator is to always stay up to date on the best way to keep kids safe, which I have the ability to do as a practicing pediatrician. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up sign, share, 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 and subscribe for more content tailored to help you understand your child's health, development, and behavior with confidence. Comment below with any questions, comments, or personal experiences with detoxes or heavy metal exposure. I hope I brought more confidence into your parenting journey. Stay informed, stay empowered, and I will continue to provide you the evidence and experience you need to raise healthy children. I'll see you all next time. Stay well.